In 1997, Modern Modo, a small Milanese creative publisher, created the Moleskin trademark, bringing back to life the legendary notebook used by artists and thinkers over the past two centuries. A simple black rectangle with rounded corners, an elastic page holder, and internal expandable pocket. A nameless object with a spare perfection all its own. Produced for over a century by a small French bookbinder that supplied the stationery shops of Paris, where the artistic and literary avant garde of the world browsed and bought them. In the fall of 2006, Modern Modo was purchased by SG Capital Europe, now Sintegra Capital, with the objective of fully developing the potential of the Moleskine brand. Since January 2007, Moleskine is a small company enjoying continuing growth. It creates, produces and distributes not only the well-known notebooks and their various offshots, but also a series of objects for the creativity of the contemporary nomad. Diaries, journals, bags, writing instruments and reading accessories dedicated to our mobile identity, even in today's digital world. Moleskine now has about 100 employees and a vast network of partners and consultants. Its home office is in Milan, Italy. Its affiliates are Moleskine America Incorporated with offices in New York, established in early 2008, Moleskine Asia Limited with offices in Hong Kong, established in late 2011. Moleskine sells 503 items in 70 different countries worldwide through 55 distributors. In an area of information overload, the Moleskine assumption is that we all need blank space to think, create, elaborate, explore, write. This is especially so for those who work in the creative industry, always connected and digitally inclined. Moleskine is devoted exactly to this, designing blank space and open platforms for creativity and mobile living in the digital area. Good morning. Good morning. We have today at a Coffee at Tea Cream Maria Sebregondi, who is Vice President of Brand Equity Worldwide uh, of Moleskine. The way it works is uh, that uh, we drink coffee, ask questions, and then uh, we try to interact. We have today uh, a quite exclusive Indonesian beans coffee and uh, I hope you are going to appreciate. Thank you. Uh, Moleskin uh, uh, built his own uh, uh, visibility and success, I would say, uh, based on uh, the uh, value of its products, uh, the visibility of the brand, uh, the exclusivity of some of their products. Uh, can you please tell us uh, how you built the Moleskin brand, since uh, I believe you were involved in these projects since the very beginning? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh... To, to keep it short and simple, let's say that uh, the first uh, sentence I would uh, say about building the Moleskine brand is uh, to look at things with a different point of view. Uh, so, for example, we started uh, selling blank pages but with a very strong heritage inside and behind. Uh, we started to sell not a simple notebook, but uh, a book yet to be written. So we started to, to sell the Moleskine notebook not in a stationary shop, but in a bookstore uh, as a book, as your book, the book uh, where you are the author. Um, and also looking at thinking with a different point of view means uh, uh, to look at a tool coming from the past in a very contemporary aesthetic uh, design so so you you have uh, uh, renew a renewal an old story i understand and uh, you are uh, presenting uh, um, the um, product uh, um, talking about uh, uh, a storytelling about uh, and you present uh, the brand in a narrative way. C can you please tell us more on that? What is 
somehow the, the, the legend that you were able also to, to build behind the brand itself? Uh, let's say that uh, storytelling is just to make visible what really uh, in our experience objects tell us. Uh, let's say that we are related with uh, everything in, a, in an emotional and uh, uh, deep relationship. But uh, not all the time this is visible. If, if you make it visible and you nurture the story which is related with everything you use in your life, this is something uh, which is enriching your experience and giving you sense in what you are doing. Uh, speaking about the little black notebook coming from the past, which was the favorite of the uh, artists and uh, literary avant-garde, especially in Paris, uh, the international uh, authors uh, uh, living there in the first half of the 20th century uh, and uh, they were collecting in those kind of pages uh, their ideas, projects and uh, sketches uh, of beloved uh, uh, paintings or uh, very famous uh, uh, novels like uh, Hemingway or Picasso. And then uh, Bruce Chatwin, the writer, traveler, the English uh, writer and traveler, uh, who was very uh, keen and very passionate of this kind of notebook, uh, tells uh, a story in uh, one of his most famous uh, novel, which is uh, The Song Lines, uh, dedicated to uh, Australia. And uh, there uh, he dedicated a, an entire chapter to, to those notebooks and to the fact that they were disappeared since they were a sort of manufactured uh, uh, tools and uh, the, the, the factory producing it in France uh, uh, was closed. And uh, reading this story, uh, it remembered me that uh, I myself, I had been a user of this kind of notebooks uh, uh, between the 70s and 80s uh, of the last uh, century, uh, when I was in Paris, and I had some of them uh, still with me. So I told myself, why don't we reproduce uh, in a contemporary way uh, this kind of uh, tool and uh, uh, keeping inside uh, uh, the rich story and tradition that it brings. You're talking about a, a notebook, so basically a, a quite simple object. Uh, however, it seems you were able to put, uh, uh, to build a sort of uh, uh, image of uh, exclusivity of uh, uh, luxurious uh, object. Uh, do, do, you, do you share this view? What's your perception of the product? Let's say that we we rather uh, speak about uh, the, the Moleskin notebook uh, as a cultural uh, product uh, more than a, a luxury object. Uh, what is the difference uh, to me? The difference is that uh, luxury is uh, exclusive. Uh, it points out the exclusivity of uh, having uh, or using uh, something. Uh, culture is inclusive. So it's, uh, uh, you can say, very special. Culture is very special, is strongly related with our highest, uh, let's say, aspiration, uh, but at the same time is not, uh, uh, is not exclusive. Uh, uh, we are happy uh, with the sharing of knowledge, of culture, of beauty, uh, and not uh, uh, perceiving it as uh, uh, diminishing if a lot of people uh, have access to it. 
it's certainly uh, there is an, uh, an intangible part of the brand which is uh, key in uh, uh, developing it uh, um, even internationally. Uh, it seemed then that uh, emotions and feelings you were able to capture were widespread all over the world and uh, were able to intercept at least the demand that was uh, diffused in different culture even. Uh, yes, uh, we think that uh, even if uh, in all uh, different areas of the world there are different cultures, at the same time nowadays uh, uh, we have a, a sort of a global niche of uh, uh, creative professionals, knowledge workers uh, who share uh, the same values and similar uh, lifestyles. Uh, this uh, is one of the strengths of our brand. We are working on this kind of uh, uh, feelings and uh, uh, this kind of uh, people. Um, we work also in proximity uh, to the different areas, uh, geographical areas in the world uh, through our local distributors, so very near to the public. But at the same time, uh, the, the, the image and the storytelling of the, of the brand is the same all over the world. I'm pretty interested about two issues which are on one side communication and on the other side actual uh, physical distribution, so we go more on the uh, practical side of the business. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, your approach to communication was pretty exclusive and somehow consistent with the image you are trying to uh, transmit. Uh, can you tell us how you actually built visibility and uh, uh, awareness worldwide uh, uh, around the brand and uh, the products? Uh, yes, speaking about having a, an innovative approach uh, also to communication, um, we uh, never did uh, traditional advertising and uh, we communicated uh, uh, the value of the uh, Moleskine uh, notebooks uh, through the notebooks itself, because the main communication is uh, strongly related with the object, uh, communication in the packaging, but especially in the uh, leaflet, which is inside the pocket of each notebook. And uh, uh, we created a strong uh, word of mouth uh, which have been, uh, has been uh, spontaneous, but at the same time strongly uh, fostered by uh, our activity, especially in the digital world, in the web. Uh, we, had, uh, we were lucky to, to be intercepted uh, since the very beginning uh, by the, uh, let's say, the techie guys, the creative professional working uh, on the most uh, cutting edge of the, of the uh, culture and uh, professional activity. And uh, with them uh, we started a dialogue uh, which has been uh, spread uh, in a, let's say, viral or uh, buzzing uh, way. Do you feel that you were able also to build a community behind uh, these products? Uh, I understand you have uh, also uh, an application that goes on uh, uh, the, the smartphones uh, and uh, uh, I've tried to explore a bit the, 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 the material on the web and it seems uh, discussion blogs mentioning Moleskine are pretty uh, um, spread out the word. Yes, uh, um, uh, we, we had a spontaneous uh, flourishing of uh, communities, groups, uh, forums discussing about uh, sketching, writing in the digital era. And uh, we started uh, a strong dialogue with them and uh, also we built our own community on our uh, 
uh, website and we have an, uh, um, quite uh, a strong activity in the social media. We have uh, on Facebook uh, uh, more than uh, 100,000 fans and uh, on Twitter and so on. And uh, yes, it's, uh, let's say, a, an activity that we promote, but at the same time, which is really um, nurtured by the public. Mm. This is a very lucky situation. Uh, that's why we are also developing some uh, digital products and services. Uh, till now we just uh, have a very simple uh, iOS application, uh, but we are working uh, uh, hardly. We are interested especially in what is between the analog world and the digital world. We are not uh, envisioning to, to play a role as a, a, a completely digital company, uh, which we are not. Uh, but uh, we are. Uh, we have the ambitious to the ambition to occupy a sort of uh, uh, interesting space, which is between the two worlds. So. Uh, uh, what you can transfer from your analog experience in the digital world and uh, on the contrary what you can uh, put on in your physical activity uh, from the digital world. And what is quite exciting is the fact that uh, uh, the, for example, the sketching, the uh, creative activity on the pages of the notebooks uh, uh, had a, a very strong support by the digital world because people started to make uh, their activity visible and shareable. And this is uh, a, new, uh, a new way of looking to creativity. Uh, completely related to what we are experiencing today, a sort of shared uh, intimacy of socialized uh, uh, privacy. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, an opportunity that uh, the, the digital technologies uh, uh, is created. And let's then turn to the uh, internationalization process. Uh, um, you selected uh, uh, distributors all over the world. Uh, uh, have, uh, did you choose a, a, a consistent approach, uh, whatever the country? Did you select different channels, uh, retail uh, um, models uh, according to different countries? Um, let's say that um, initially we, we had a a completely consistent and similar uh, uh, approach, um, looking at uh, special distributors, local distributors, sharing the same values uh, uh, that we had uh, on producing and uh, creating and designing uh, the, the Moleskine uh, objects. Uh, and uh, we shared with them uh, the, the strategy, the approach to the market and also the success. Uh, the channel, as I uh, said before, uh, was the main and the first channel has been uh, the bookshop, the bookstores, uh, both uh, speaking about uh, big chains, but also independent and uh, very small uh, bookshops. Um, Speaking about enlarging and approaching also new markets, uh, uh, sometimes we had to uh, adapt this kind of model, always choosing uh, or trying to choose the right partners, uh, but uh, going also in different channels. For example, speaking about uh, uh, China, um, where the, the, the bookstores uh, have a very different uh, uh, tradition and uh, uh, system uh, if you compare it uh, to the Western countries or European or uh, US uh, uh, channel. Uh, 
so that there is more going to the concept store, the design stores, the department stores, where you can represent uh, the same uh, values uh, uh, all over the world. As a matter of fact, a bookstore seems to be uh, suffering nowadays. Uh, are you concerned about uh, uh, what could be the consequences on your uh, distribution capability? Uh, are you uh, considering other uh, channels that could effectively replace uh, those who are in uh, trouble? Yes, for sure. Um, we are uh, working on uh, differentiating our channels. At the moment, uh, uh, bookstores that represented uh, the 60% of our uh, doors uh, all over the world are now around 40%. So the incidence of bookstores in our uh, presence in the market is uh, uh, starting to, to go below. Um, and at the same time, there are new kinds of uh, offers in the market. In general, also bookstores are looking to uh, different strategies to <laughs> in order to to, uh, to to go out from the difficulties they have now. So what is interesting is the fact that uh, bookstores. Uh, uh, already since uh, 10 years and more, are not only uh, selling books, uh, but at the same time, uh, their identity is in a, in a very difficult uh, moment. Uh, so we are approaching also them, uh, offering uh, an idea of being a, um, a sort of a cultural lifestyle, uh, destination. Uh, so what we are studying with our partners, with our big uh, uh, partner in terms of uh, presence in the market, is uh, really to refound also a, a model for, for the bookstore. Sure. Uh, how did you plan, uh, if you did, uh, uh, your presence uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, are, are, did you approach some countries that you consider to be key for your development or you are rather uh, responding to some uh, uh, solicitation that may come from the distributors in different mm. parts of the world? Mm. Yes, let's say both uh, because <laughs> uh, the contest and the opportunities that come to you are always uh, significant. But at the same time, uh, for sure, we have uh, strategies. Uh, at the moment, uh, uh, we are uh, strongly looking at uh, the uh, Asia-Pacific area as one of the main area of development uh, of, uh, uh, for, for our company our, and our business. We recently opened uh, an affiliate in Hong Kong in order to be uh, closer uh, to the market and closer to our uh, partners and distributors. At the same time, we look at uh, uh, Russia and uh, South America. Uh, especially Brazil is our, uh, one of our uh, main uh, prospect market, let's say. So you are uh, considering a, a uh, development in the uh, fast-growing markets. Uh, do you consider that uh, uh, positioning the product uh, there where maybe the culture is rather different than uh, uh, the, the Western one uh, would uh, uh, require some adaptation uh, both in the way you communicate or in your products? Ah, let's say that we are uh, learning, <laughs> first of all. In general, we try to, that's why we, we strongly partner with uh, local distributors and local partners, because this is uh, uh, the, 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 the fast learning uh, is uh, facilitated. And uh, uh, we have our uh, values and our model, which is uh, 
the same uh, all over the world, but uh, for sure uh, we have uh, also adaptation. Uh, the, the first is uh, the language, for example. We already have our website in uh, more than 10 uh, languages, so this is uh, the kind of uh, proximity that we want to develop. Uh, we will uh, develop also a presence in the social network, uh, for example, uh, China and in general, uh, Far East uh, has a different uh, social network or, so for example, it's to, to, to be present there with the same uh, contents and uh, values, uh, but uh, being there uh, with a local uh, approach. Uh, another uh, strong driver for the development of the business has been in the past and will be uh, the uh, customization, the custom editions uh, that we are developing with local partners in uh, special events or uh, companies uh, uh, well uh, positioned in the country where we, uh, with the, and with whom uh, we develop uh, project. Is your product uh, suffering uh, uh, by counterfeiting uh, uh, sort of fake products? Uh, do you uh, consider that as a real danger? Not really. Uh, we for sure have <laughs> uh, problems like that, but uh, uh, the strength of the, of the brand is uh, related to the contents and the value that Moleskine is bringing to uh, its public. And uh, this is so distinctive that uh, it's not so suffering from uh, copies. Uh, well, and also I think that uh, in general the public is uh, change, changing uh, uh, their mind uh, in, uh, on this uh, issue. For example, in, in, uh, in China, uh, maybe you, you, you know that, uh, the, the, let's say what is the, the core of our public, but not only uh, for our brand, uh, they are uh, very keen to have the original they are asking for authenticity in a very strong way. So if you speak about mass market, for sure is, uh, there are plenty of uh, everything. But if you speak uh, to, to the global niche uh, we are uh, talking about and we are targeting, uh, they are more and more interested in authenticity and uh, uh, they look at the brand as the, uh, the one who can guarantee the, the originality and the authenticity. This is, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, so this is something which is uh, also changing. Maria Sibergondi, thank you for joining us at uh, Coffee at Ikrin. Uh, we really enjoyed that. Thank you, and thanks to your uh, very important activity related with access to knowledge and uh, nurturing culture. Thank you. Thank you.